How are you guys doing? Josh here with Ohio Fish Rescue. Now you guys have been asking for weeks upon weeks and weeks for a Shack Koi baby koi fry update. Well today you're going to get that. But first let's go out back, check in with my dad, give you guys the background story. Alrighty, so coming outside, here is the big man himself. I'm gonna go ahead and let him take this story away and give you guys some little background story on the Shaquille O'Neal baby koi fry. Okay, a lot of you know about this. You know the Shaq fry, you've heard it, you know it, you've been waiting for this. Like Josh said, but there's a few of you new people that don't know it. We actually went, uh, here, let me start a little earlier than that. We went up to Chicago for Greg Woodstock and picked up some koi that he was donating to Shaquille O'Neal. 13 to be exact. Huge. 3 foot, 36 inch. Beautiful koi. Butterfly koi too. Drove them all the way back to Ohio. Kept them here at the rescue for about a week until Shaquille... Wait, wait, wait a minute. This what wasn't, you know, a willing experience. Greg called me and said, Hey Josh, you want to meet Shaquille O'Neal? And I said, why the hell not? And then uh, he proceeded to tell us that we have 13 giant koi that are around three foot coming to the rescue. And now we're all frantic. And my dad's in Chicago picking up the, these beasts. He's, you know, knee deep in a pond. And I have to sit here and figure out a tub to be able to put them, which is that's that pond right behind you. Now, mind you, this was fresh, clean pool, set up beautifully, clear, so clear water. I get back from Chicago, didn't lose a fish six and a half hours well it was actually about eight hours because we stopped for a water change in a 500 gallon tub filled about 300 gallons up of these koi now we get them here we acclimate them to this water i drove my van into the backyard we acclimate them here and we put them into this pool we're good we got the filtration been running that barrel full of bio balls been running forever on our system we're thinking we're great we go to bed i'm tired we're tired it's like two in the morning I wake up in the morning and that whole pool is covered with a froth. It looked like a bubble bath. It was ridiculous. There was, they spawned and spawned and spawned. There were gazillions of eggs everywhere. My worry was the ammonia and the nitrites skyrocketed. I mean, it wasn't even on the API chart. It was so high. We immediately took the fish out, ran them inside and put them in with our stingrays and took our stingrays out of the pool and put them elsewhere in the, in the area. Now we got crisis averted. None of the fish died. We're good. The the babies are, are hatching out here. But now, mind you, the water was still high in nitrates. We've we've changed water ammonia. Every, ammonia. We changed water every single day, and it's still still doing it. And it's pouring down rain on yeah, us. Yeah, I don't know which other YouTubers will sit out here and stand and pour in rain while he's telling you a story. But so, let's continue. Anyways, uh, so we're changing water daily. What I did was I set up six different tanks in there. And I took babies out. I just scooped them up, brought them in, put them in tanks with sponge filters, everything. So now we got six different tanks of shack fry, shack koi fry. Um, my theory was there's literally thousands of them. If they die out here, I'll have some in there. If they don't make it there, I'll have some over here. I wanted some of these huge 36-inch butterfly koi babies. Well, now let's say something else on top of that. You know, koi have thousands and thousands of eggs. But the survival rate on koi are not always 100%. Oh, there are there close. are things that you can do to make the survival rate increase. But we, we were happy with the eggs that we got. We were like, if we get 100 out, out of the, the batch, we'd be ecstatic. Right. So now we found out the bigger ones eat the little ones. So we've been taking out all the bigger ones as they grow. Because we still got some probably about a half inch long in there and out here there's some of them are two inches long so you we've been taking the, the big ones yet huh that was supposed to be a surprise all the big oh. ones <laughs> so we've been taking all the ones that get too big in here and letting the little ones grow um so you know we've got some smaller ones we got medium-sized ones and we got out here and now you look out here there's so much algae in here you really don't see any until nighttime or early morning then they're out by the thousands but during the daytime they hide in that algae all right, so let's dive in a little bit deeper on this back pond. So we, we gave uh, different living conditions for each of the, the, the koi tanks. So inside, clean water, clean filtration. We feed them four times a day, if not more. 
out here we kind of let nature take its course as you can see algae. there is string <laughs> algae everywhere algae all over the bottom there is uh all different types of aquatic plants snails there are bug larvae and the koi seem to love it and they are getting monstrous in here they Sorry. grew bigger in here than they did in any one of our tanks that is true you can't really see nothing right now because it is uh drizzling raining pretty hard but we just have a single filter on this back pond this is a 55 gallon drum filled all the way up with bio balls and then a few layers of mechanical pad with a uh, 4,000 gallon per hour, if not maybe a little bit more, going on just this pond. And the koi seem to love it. Um, can't really see them out right now, but let's go inside and take a look at some of the other baby shack koi. So you guys seen pond slash tank number one on the back deck. You come in here to the monster pond room behind our little jungle fence here. We have this little 30 gallon tank. This is a rimless tank that we set up, has two different sponge filters in it. Now you can see it is right underneath a skylight. So there is a bunch of algae. We went ahead and let that go ahead and grow. Because now, the, the baby koi do eat the algae. Now in here we probably got maybe 25 or so. But if you look closely, Josh, show them the extreme difference in sizes. So yeah, you, you can see, so there, there goes my thumb next to one. He's probably about three quarters of an inch long. But there's one in here that we have to catch out. See that guy right there. He's over an inch long. He can probably start, you know, munching on some of these smaller guys. So like him, for, for a case, we would take him and throw him in the pond out back. He would then start living out there with a bunch of other koi his size and eating you know bug larvae we still do throw in uh pellets and whatnot we like to feed shrimp pellets because they do break apart in the water yes you crush them and they bust up into little tiny pieces and the, the little baby boy can eat them and the sa same thing we have uh rapashi and stuff like that but you, you can see here goes some uh string algae that we went ahead and threw in there they now, love munching on it remember there were literally hundreds in here yep. we have just been non-stop catching the bigger ones and throwing them outside and you know just letting the little ones continue growing so our, our our numbers have thinned out in here and there's literally hundreds of them out in the pond also you see there are a bunch of pest snails in here and then you see a bunch of empty pest snail shells well the koi they love to eat snails so i actually seen this happen the, the other day the koi would actually go up and it would uh, grab onto the trap door of the, 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 the snail. And he would wait there until the snail got tired and, and get, gave up. He'd open up his trap door and then the, the snail would eat the insides out of the snail shell and just leave the em empty shell. So you can see they, they've all got some uh, pretty beefy bellies on them. They are actually starting to get some fantastic color. We already have a few f favorites out there that I can't wait to see how they develop and they, what they grow into. We're not able to see if any of them are, you know, butterfly yet because they're still a little bit too small to tell that. Usually at about two, three inches, they'll, they'll start developing the longer tails and whatnot. So, you ready to go in and show them the ones inside? <laughs> All righty. So, we're going to come by this uh, monster pond again. As you can see, it's right. looking great out here. Look how nice the looking Yep, I was going to pan back after we can get the whole view. So we've been cleaning up out here. I showed you guys the other day, we went ahead and got all these tables moved. So the lounge is back up and going. You can sit out here by the monster pond. I have been working at nighttime to hook up these uh, 500, 700, and 1,000 gallon. Bulkheads are in, the lights are hooked up. Um, we are just about ready to uh, get them filled with water as soon as we have a few more parts come in the mail. So that will be happening here shortly. Now let's go into the fish room. We're coming in here to the fish room. Down the aisle we go. So we come up to tank number three. You can see we have a grow light on it and it is packed full with uh, algae in the bottom and we have some plants here up top. The koi love to hide Look down in the bottom. Little. Yeah, they're some so cute. Them, they're only <laughs> still a half inch long. And then you've got other ones over here that are an inch long. Yeah. So the, these are the ones that we feed four times a day with uh, shrimp pellets and whatnot, and they are just devouring them. Now this is tank number three. Now you move on to tank number four, right next door. Each one is <laughs> fitted with a matten filter in the back. Of course, ran off our linear air pump, magnificent filters. This one, 
They are about this, the same size. These actually have a few l larger ones in that we can maybe bump up soon. But these ones are just starting to develop their they, color. They're growing so much slower than the ones outside, though. It's yeah. a crazy the, the, the growth rate difference. But Let's look at the size of that guy. He's got to come out soon. He'll start eating these little guys. See, right in the back right there? Yeah, there's still some tiny ones back there. Yeah. But, like, you know, God intended, nature is always best. They grow, <laughs> they grow the quickest. They look the best. I mean, the, the same thing with Arapaima. I have never been able to find an Arapaima in captivity that looked like the ones that are in the wild. The color is just phenomenal. So the same goes for koi. And, and the plants are doing amazing in here with them. They're, yes, they're just hooked onto the algae and just growing towards the light. They're doing really good. Surprising. And koi actually love to be in mud ponds. So they, they will grow the quickest and develop the most color in a mud pond. But now, there is, see all them white spots on the wall right there? Yep. Them are all little baby snails. So hopefully, uh, they'll get, they'll get e eaten yeah. up, that's for sure. Now over here is the biggest one we have indoors. <laughs> this is tank three, four, five now. Look all at right. this guy. Wait a oh, minute. You're gonna wait. We've got water sprite up top along with some other uh, plants growing in between them. And of course the best decoration in the room. We've got Bikini Bottom. Well, we've got the <laughs> Pineapple House for SpongeBob. But you can see that's the koi my dad was just talking about there. He is over an inch long. His color's coming in. You can see he is going to be a whitish gray with orange spotting on him. And you can see we've got this big old snail in there. And there are a bunch of empty snail shells. So these guys are eating the snails. Or the <laughs> one big one is eating all the snails. Yeah. <laughs> Look how big that one is, though, compared to some of these guys in here. That's just insane. So we're going to have to catch him out and take him to the back pond. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we keep catching these out and taking them to the back pond. That These numbers are thinning out. Yes, sir. So we, we can pan back and show you all three tanks at once. There we go. So the, these were these five tanks were the five spots that we put the Shaquille O'Neal Shaq Koi Fry. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed your uh, what was that? A 12 we're not done yet. On your Shaquille <laughs> O'Neal Fry, but like my dad just said, we are not done yet. As you know from our previous video, we had just gotten a three-foot electric eel. And I asked you guys to come up with names for the electric eel. The, the comments are still rolling in off the shelf, so we are not done yet. Once those numbers kind of die down, we will pick a name. But right now, so some of the names that have been mentioned are, you know, Tesla and Elon and uh, what do you got? We Elon got Zappy Musk. and Sparky. And there, there was a lot of people wanting, uh, like, Greek gods or some sort of god reference like Jupiter and Thor. There was a lot of picks for Zeus. Molnir, uh, Thor's hammer, yeah. and Zeus, yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> so uh, we, we don't know which name we are going to pick yet, but the eel is doing great. I actually got him to feed yesterday, and my god, is he an aggressive feeder. He kind of scares me a little bit. <laughs> Not pumpkin boy, he wasn't scared, was he? <laughs> but yeah, let's come, come over here, we'll give you a little... Up, up, up. Wait, hold up. Give him a little view of him. I don't see him. Oh, he's on the right side. Here he is. There he goes. Watch him, as soon as I open this, he is right there. He knows there's food coming. <laughs> but he was absolutely hammering food last night. It was insane. Alrighty, so coming over here, I told you guys I would give you basically a day-to-day -day update. Well, this is an every two-day update. You guys just seen a little update on Odin in the last video, and you guys seen a remarkable difference. I fed him heavily again last night, and look at his fat belly now. That was so oh, soaking. Don't call him fat. That's not no, nice. No, no, no. I want my penis to be fat. But he is looking healthy now, and he's got a, a, a belly on him. His fins are all coming back at an exceptionally fast rate. So I want you guys to know he will be, uh, I'd say probably give him a few more days to, to fill out a little bit more. And then we're going to throw him in the 2,500 gallon stingray pond and give him all the room to explode and grow. Where the last team have come from. Yep. Yep. Now, over here, Pittsburgh and Lavaca. They are doing great still. Um, like I said in the last video, Pittsburgh did have a little nip on his right arm. That is because... Lavaca was sifting through the, the, the sand and she kind of nipped his right arm. 
But here we go. We'll get Pittsburgh out for you guys. Pittsburgh absolutely love, or not Pittsburgh, Lavaca loves to sift through the sand. So you can see the bottom of my tank is absolutely destroyed. Oh, and there yeah, is sand go. all over sand the driftwood everywhere. in the back. But she loves digging Bad through girl. that sand. Bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all the holes. And then all their plants, they're, they're uprooted. They're gone back there. Where's the plants? Are they floating? There's some. The crypts? No, the crypts are there. Okay. I see the tops of some crypts right there. All them plants there are all crypts. And there's a few over here. But there was some right across the middle here. I don't know where they are yet, but... Bad girl. <laughs> all right, so another thing. You guys knew that uh, we had this elaborate plan to get these Bellagios in. And we were waiting on Steven from SE Aquatics to come and pick up this tank. Well, a little bit of a change of plan. See, Steven was just going to use the, the panels and with his new design, actually have three panels of more expensive, the Star Fire Low Iron Glass sitting in the backyard. That would be more suitable for Steven's build. So he wants to take them three panels along with some filtration. That will pay him off for uh, helping us out with these stands here. So that means it is now back on us to move this 2,000 gallon out of this so room. So it's back to our Paku tank? It certainly can be, but where we're going to put this tank is not inside. Oh, so you can't put Paku <laughs> in it, gotcha. Maybe, maybe in the summertime. Now, I, I'm playing dumb, I'm just trying to explain what other people are thinking and how they would think about it. So, yes, uh, Josh has got other plans for this now, but... Um, it is absolutely pouring down rain out, out here right now, so I'm not going to show you where it's going. I'll bear it. I'll go do but it. But this weekend, we are going to uh, drain this tank, get it moved out, hopefully get the Bellagios moved in. So we have some uh, exciting stuff happening here. And coming outside, you know what? Just come on. He's just going to bear it. Oh, <laughs> oh he's cold. It's cold. Ah. Oh. All right. So it's really here, loud out here. Yeah, it's a little bit loud with the rain, so I'll speak a little bit louder. Against this wall right here, you can see we've been clearing out the cement. So we, we are going to build an actual little platform here for the tank. And we're going to set the tank against this wall. It will be covered from uh, sun and rain. So it will technically be covered, but it will be outdoors. Right. So that is our plan. And what are you going to put in them? <laughs> okay, so all the koi that Josh went on that mud pond and rescued, and then, oh, that's this pond over here, and then all Tracy's koi are all going to go into this 2,000-gallon tank over here, and that way, that's going to let us eliminate this tub, this tub, and we have five filters we can put on the 2,000-gallon tank and have it immediately up and running. But these tubs can go back away and get out of our way, and we can continue cleaning out under here and finish this off so that we can now have storage out of the rain because look at Josh's Grizzly 700 sitting out there in the rain. That's just terrible. <laughs> you, you, you shouldn't do that, son. You got room right here. You can pull it in. Right well, here. <laughs> let's go back inside and we'll do one more thing. Okay. You know what we should do is go out tonight and get the video of the pond in the backyard with all the koi babies out the big ones the big boys possible but, but if it's raining again tonight they're yeah not they're not gonna come out but uh so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video you got the update on the shaquille o'neal baby shack koi fry i love just <laughs> saying that it just rolls off the tongue you guys uh got an update. <laughs> you guys got an update on mr electric eel we've got an update on odin you got pittsburgh and vodka and you got plans on what we're doing this weekend at OFR. Oh, we're we'll going to announce that too. This Saturday, if you're free, come on uh, out to OFR. Saturday at noon. We're going to move this 2,000-gallon tank out, which is very easy. Me and Josh can do that ourselves on rollers. And then we're going to carry in the other stand and put the two uh, Bellagio tanks onto their stands. Oh. You want to be part of that. If you, can, if you can spare the time, come on out to Strongsville, Ohio. It's 20 minutes south of Cleveland. And, uh, you know, we'll supply the food and the drink for the day. And if you guys want to see more crazy adventures with the Ohio Fish Rescue, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh -huh. And as always, <laughs> stay, stay fishy, fishy, my friends. friends.